Hello, welcome back to the Cleve Tech Tech Tip. And this is the second part of our 132nd Eurosport Slot Car World Championships report and tech tips. If you haven't seen the first part, have a look up here. There's a link there to part one. Have a look at that because otherwise you probably won't understand what I'm talking about this this time round. I also want to take time to say thank you so much to the people that have given me likes uh, for my videos, people that are watching my videos, people that have subscribed to my channel. Um, it's so lovely to know that there are so many slot racers out there that are loving some of the stuff that I do and finding some of the tech tips that I'm giving them really helpful to make them go faster when they're slot racing. As I've said to people when they've messaged me, I had a lot of help when I was younger slot racing. Lots of people helped me out. People helped me build the cars. People have taught me things to do on my cars over the years. Um, and as I say, it's nice to give something back to new slot racers or even old slot racers who've been doing it a long time, but still want to improve and still want to get better. So thank you to everybody for that. Uh, it's re I really appreciate it. Also to those people that have used the little thanks button down the bottom there to send me a little bit of contribution to help me keep doing these kind of things and help me keep slot racing and producing these videos for you. So again, thank you so much to those people that made those contributions towards my channel to help me keep going. Thank you so much. So in the last video, I left with the fact that we'd done some qualifying and we'd done a heat and I'd done fairly well and it was time to do some servicing on the car. And then we moved into the semi-final and things didn't go to plan. So that's where we're gonna pick up today. Well, let's start by taking a look at the body shells. You can see from the two body shells that I used, it probably wasn't a body shell issue that caused my problem in the semi-final at the World Championships. They're both pretty good. They're hardly damaged at all. I didn't really hit much. And in fact, um, one of these body shells has actually did the whole of the European Championship as well. It's probably this one here, did the whole of the European Championship as well. And it's still not damaged or anything. So you can see I'm pretty good at staying out of trouble and not hitting things uh, and have done very well. So both body shells are pretty good. You can see um, they are reinforced around the front pinholes there and around here. They tend to bend quite a bit here. These are actually a Colhosa uh, body shell. I believe it's a Colhosa Audi, um, I think they call it. Um, but these are not going to be used in 2023 um, because these are produced in Russia and we're moving to components that are not going to be used or that are produced outside of Russia. Um, so it's going to be the Red Fox Audi that's going to be used in 2023. I'll put a picture on the screen so you can have a look at the new shape of body. So these are fairly redundant now, but they're actually a really good slot racing shell. Um, they're pretty robust and the handling of them is very good. But you can see, um, again, along with the reinforcing up through the rear here and over the rear corners, and there's not a lot of reinforcing on the shell, but they've lasted very, very well um, and they're great shells. So it wasn't the shell that caused my problem. Was it the motor? Well, let's have a look. These are the two motors I used. Now, this was the motor that I used in the heats. Let's have a closer look. So this motor was my qualifying motor and the motor I used in the heats. I did rebuild this motor with the help of Gavin Wills um, after the heat when I put the other motor in, um, just in case I needed a spare motor. You can see it's got a damaged magnet, but that magnet there has been damaged for ages. It's just chipped off one of the corners or it's actually probably lost half of this external magnet here. And this is an, I think it's an 18 mag Cayman motor. I've had it many years actually, but it's got a PK armature inside it here. Um, being a Cayman, the magnets aren't quite as strong as the magnets you might find in a Vokey or Cohosa setup. Um, so maybe sometimes you can go for a slightly hotter wind of arm than you perhaps would do normally. Um, now this happens to be a 19 turns of 25 PK. 
Um, it's a fairly low timing on this one, I believe, um, in this setup. But again, you've got to be careful in Cayman setups because the magnets are weaker. If you go too hot a wind, you find that the heat of the motor builds up too much and you overheat the commutator of the motor because the magnetic field, it doesn't quite balance with the magnetic field you're producing in the armature and everything can overheat a little bit. Um, but this motor ran fine. I, I tested this motor previously in a round of the British Open Championships um, and it seemed to work quite well. And ran okay. I tested it also in the practice sessions and was reasonably happy with it. It wasn't as good as my best motor but it was perhaps good enough to qualify and do a heat with and that was the plan and that's what I did. So this motor didn't fail. This was fine. So the motor was fine in the heats. Then we take a look at the motor that I used in the semi-final and this motor was pretty awesome. I used this motor uh, also in the uh, European Championships to win the European Championships with and again, this is a, um, it's actually, I believe this one's actually a Cohosa. Um, and I think this one's got 16 mags in it. And again, another PK arm, 19 of 25. Uh, no, sorry, this one is a 20 of 25 in this one. And you can see this is the brush wear after the semi-final. So the negative brush, a little bit of wear there. I don't know whether you can see into there how much is still left of the brush slots there you can see the positive one which does tend to wear more but there's still a fair bit of movement there left for that brush to get quite a bit shorter before it totally wears out you can see just inside here and again the negative one has you know same if not more wear still to go now that was more wear than i was expecting because of my problem and the problem was these things here, these braids at the front of the car. Now these are not the actual braids that I used in the race. Um, I've changed them since because we've had a round of the British Open Championship since and I prepared this uh, car for that event. But you can see the start of what can possibly happen. You see how, look at the end of this braid here, can you see how it started to burn a bit? but it started occasionally to weld itself together on the end here. Some of the copper tends to stick to other bits of copper. Rather than it being all the individual strands, it tends to sort of weld itself and go hard. Now, normally when you're racing, you do wear braids out. They wear out through arcing against the braid of the track and the general current that you're drawing through the motor or through the lead wires and through the motor, etc. And the hotter the motor, in effect, the, you know, the stronger the wind you use, um, the more current you're drawing, and the more you're likely to burn braids. Now, mine was actually a braid issue, but it wasn't the braid issue you'd normally expect. And I had a problem, I was racing around and the car just started to go slowly. Now, I thought, oh no, what's happening here? Is it my motor's gone slow? Because it was... It was just gradually slowing down. It had lost a bit of pace. And then it started you know, losing pace dramatically. And this was, while I was whilst I was in the lead of the top semi-final. And then I'd lost the lead by that point a little bit. I dropped down into second as the car was moving quite slowly. And it just got worse. Over the course of about 10 laps, the car got slower and slower. So I thought, well, I better pick it up and have a look. So I looked at the car. My first thought, oh, is it braids? Is it, you know, have I got a burnt braid, etc.? So I looked at the braid and thought, oh no, the braid looks all right. Now, when you normally look at your slot car, the way our tracks are wired um, in Europe is when you're looking at the top of the car here, we actually have the positive braid is on the right and the negative braid is on the left. So when your motor's in like this, our lead wires tend to have to cross over like that on your motor. That's the way they generally tend to be wired. Obviously, you could build the motor the other way around, etc. But that's... That's just the way our tracks are wired. We have the positive on the right, negative on the left. So when you turn it round and you're upside down, you've actually got the negative braid here. Now, that's the one here on the right hand side here as you're looking underneath the car. That's the one that normally burns loads. So when I picked the car up and I turned it over and had a look at this braid and thought, oh, you know, the, the, that braid looks okay. I picked it up a bit. Still, still the car was slow. So I thought, oh, what's going on here? What's the problem? What's the problem? Now, 
I thought, oh, maybe my motor, maybe the brushes are stuck in my motor. It was it was a similar feeling to the feeling that the motor wasn't getting proper power. You know, maybe the brushes were seized or maybe they weren't touching the com right. A um, little bit intermittent uh, sort of speed. So I thought, so I tapped my car on the side, you know, tried to shake the motor a little bit, give it a tap to free up the brushes, maybe sort of poked uh, a little bit in there. I picked it up in front of me to try and do that. Still nothing. So I'd lost a bit of time then and I thought, well, I've got to take it over to my pit bench now and fix it. I can't carry on. So I took it over to the pit bench, put it on the power supply, seemed to run OK. And then we happened to notice something just really silly that I didn't notice before. About halfway down, halfway down, the other braid, so the braid that's on the other side, it don't normally have any burning. About halfway down, the braid itself had started to sort of weld itself. You've got a horrible sort of black patch in the middle of the braid, which was very, very weird. And that horrible black patch was obviously causing some sort of conduction issue through the braid or onto the track. Um, whether or not it was the fact that maybe I'd picked up some rubber on the braid at some point and then it had started arcing and, uh, and not working at all. But I didn't happen to notice that because I was looking at the braid that always burns. And maybe even when I pick the car up and you've got it in your hand, maybe like this, you know, and I was sort of looking at the braid. I didn't really even look at that braid. I was looking at the braid I was expecting to burn. So I happened to notice this black patch halfway down. So we managed to scrape through that braid and you know, pull out all the, the, the black patch of the braid. And the braid was actually OK um, underneath. It's probably quicker than quicker than putting a new braid in just to give it a quick scrape with a knife. So flatten, straighten the braids out, put the car back on and it was running fine. But by then I'd lost so many laps you know, identifying that problem. It's really annoying because I should have noticed it before and I just didn't. Um, so I'm sort of kicking myself for that. But clean it up, put it back on and the car was brilliant again. But I had so many laps to catch up. So at that point I decided it was all or nothing. So I turned all the chokes off and just went for it. And the car was absolutely awesome. I was putting laps and laps back on people. Obviously, they didn't have to push as hard because they were perhaps just cruising around to make the final. But I was pushing hard and I was really, really fast. Um, I managed to do 4.3 second laps uh, on a lot of lanes. And when you look at some of the times here that I put on the left of the screen there of what people managed to achieve, you can see that was quick compared to a lot of those people. It was quicker than qualifying. It was quicker than the final. It was quicker than the heats. It was the quickest times that people have been doing. So I was really, really pleased with that. And that probably explains why these brushes have worn a lot more than I was expecting. Because um, I wasn't intending on running the motor flat out at that point. I was going to save this motor and do semi-final and final on the same motor without having to change. But I did have a second motor as a backup if I did desperately need to put a motor in for the final if something did happen to this one. Um, and I'd also rebuilt my heat motor. But that was my problem. It was a silly, simple slot car braid that caused me the issue. No! And it was really annoying. You know, I'm annoyed with myself. I didn't spot it earlier because the car was great. And what could have been? Um, it could have been a win, but it wasn't. Um, who knows? But that's not taking anything away from the guy that did win it. And that was Ravis Janssens, who thoroughly deserved his win. Um, had a close battle with uh, Dominicus, um, but pulled away. Ravis wasn't in the lead all the way. He took it easy, built up his speed. He got there in the end, took it safely, and he, and he got the win. And that was uh, an excellent result for him. That was his second world championship that he's managed to achieve. Um, really nice guy and really well deserved. Um, so all credit to him. He did it. I didn't. Um, you've got to be in it to win it. And I wasn't in it, unfortunately. So that's what slot racing is about. You don't always uh, you know, achieve everything you want to achieve. And it's just weird that this was the one car, one class in particular that I really, really felt very happy with and knew my car was really good. But things didn't go to plan. Things happen. So you just got to get on with it, and get motivated for the next class. So that was a little bit of a letdown. But I'll leave you with some footage of the last few moments of the race. See you.
So congratulations do go to Ravis and the Latvian team for uh, a World Championships in 30-second Eurosport. Just so I'd mention as well before the end of the video, uh, people are going to bound to be asked, well, what gear ratio did you run? Well, so you can see here, five-tooth pinion. Five-tooth engineeringly should never work on a, on a gear, um, but it does work just about. So five-tooth pinion, it's on a 1.2 millimeter ground down shaft here to get uh, the correct or slightly larger tooth to mesh with the gear, but it's 72 pitch, uh, five tooth pinion on a 1.2 mil shaft, and that runs against a 39 tooth Cohosa 72 pitch gear, again on a two millimeter axle at the rear. So that was my gear ratio of choice. So there we have it. That was a summary and tech tips that I got from 30 second Eurosport at the Israel Worlds. At this point, I was thinking, I've got a second in the team race, can't complain. A tenth in 30-second Eurosport still wasn't bad in the world. When you think you're racing against, uh, I can't remember how many entries, there may be 114 in that class, maybe slightly less in the end, but potentially racing against all those other people um, that are trying their best to win a world championship, and you're racing against all the top guys from all the countries, it is really hard. So a second and a tenth at this point, I thought I can't complain. And I've been happy with that result before the World Championships took place. So it was time to move on to the next class. But you'll have to wait for the next tech tip to find out what happened in 30 second Formula One. Bye for now. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe here if you haven't done so already. And if you love my videos, give me a like, a thumbs up and a thanks. Uh, and any contributions are very, very appreciated, very much welcome, because it keeps this channel going. See you again soon.